Let me ask your neighbor, are you ready for God? I wish I could ask everyone one after the other. But please help me ask that neighbor, are you ready for God this morning? Is he or she giving you a response? If you're ready, let me hear you shout. All right. Now, Psalm 90 and verse 14. I want us to read together, everybody with a loud voice, one, two, go. I'd like you to read that one more time with the whole of your heart. One, two, go, everybody. Can you personalize that scripture that God satisfy me early? Leave us alone. Can you deal with me? Deal with the me. Want to go, everybody? The reason that I will rejoice and be glad all my days is because of healthy satisfaction. Can I begin by prophesying to the this morning that you will not wait till later to get what that's, uh, others are enjoying now? I say you will not wait till later to get what others are enjoying now. In the name of Jesus, every force of delay, every force of procrastination, every force that wants to stop your early satisfaction in the year 2020, I, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, my God will satisfy you early. If you believe that, shout it loud, amen. Say that I want to preach briefly on satisfy me early. Satisfy me early. And that's going to lead us into the anointing service. And I'm going to share with you four forces of early satisfaction. Amen. Satisfy me early. Number one, the first thing we describe from that scripture very quickly. If you have your pen, you have your daughter, please just get ready to write very briefly at the speed of light. The first thing we describe from that scripture is that our God is a God of satisfaction. Our God is a God of satisfaction. Number two, our God delights in our early satisfaction. It delights in our early satisfaction. Psalm 46 and verse 5. The Bible says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. God shall help her and that right early. Our God is a God of early satisfaction. God shall help her, help her right early. I believe that the, that's a word of the Lord for somebody here. That in the name that is above every other name, you will enjoy early satisfaction this year. In Proverbs 8, 17, it says, I love them that love me. Isaiah 66, verse 11, get those scriptures. In the name of Jesus Christ, Jeremiah 31 and verse 14, God is speaking about his prophetic agenda for our satisfaction. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 14 says, I'll make sure that they are priests, hallelujah, and I will sat satisfy, amen, I will satisfy the soul of the priest with the fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. My people shall be satisfied with my goodness. God says he will not just give you his goodness. He will make sure you are satisfied with his goodness. Is somebody hungry for satisfaction with God's goodness? Amen. You are not just going to taste it. You will be satisfied. Whatever God wants to give, God wants to give to the point of satisfaction. Even when he speaks about long life, he said, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. It will satisfy. It will satisfy. So there's a prophetic agenda for your satisfaction. Let's look at one more, one more scripture just because of time. Joel chapter 2 and verse 19. Joel chapter 2 and verse 19. Please run there very quickly. I want the, the body of Christ to see the scriptures this morning that God has a prophetic agenda for our satisfaction. He said, yeah, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, behold, I will send you corn and wine. I thought somebody will say good amen there. I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied there with glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. 
corn and wine and oil are very significant, but anyway, we leave that for today. But God said, I will send you corn, which means you will not be hungry. I will satisfy you. I will send you wine, hallelujah, which means you will have joy. You will have joy. You will have joy of your life because wine represents the joy that the Holy Ghost gives. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, you will have joy. Wine represents a season of no disappointment. You know, they were disappointed only when they ran out of wine in John chapter 2. But when Jesus gave them wine, hallelujah, everybody became satisfied. Joy returned to the party. And one of them say, wow, wow, this is exciting. So God says, I will satisfy, I will give you, I will send you come, I will send you wine, and I will send you oil. Oil speaks of the anointing. Oil speaks of the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He said, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. What counsels reproach is satisfaction of corn, oil, and wine that God gives. God said, I have a prophetic agenda for your satisfaction. I will satisfy you with corn, with wine, and with oil. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but somebody is in shortage of corn. Somebody is in shortage of oil. Somebody is in shortage of wine. But I have a good news for you this morning. There is a prophetic agenda in God for your satisfaction with the gifts. No scarcity in your life can survive it. Oh, you didn't hear what I said there. And maybe some of you are sleeping. You better wake up. I said there's a satisfaction God can give you. No barrenness in your life can survive it. There's a satisfaction God can give you. No, no mental blockage, no obstacle can stop it. There's a satisfaction God can give you. Amen. Once one day of satisfaction from God will make you forget the sufferings of many years. Amen. There's a satisfaction God can give you. He swallows the shame of many years like you were, you have never seen shame at all in your life. That's what God is saying. And that's what God wants to do. Hallelujah. As the oil of God gets on your life this morning, get ready. Be hungry that, Lord, I will be satisfied. In this area, I've been hungry. Some are financially hungry. Some are maritally hungry. Amen. Some are mentally hungry. Hallelujah. Some, their vision, their dreams are hungry. But you're saying, Lord, as this oil comes on me in the name of Jesus, let it be the oil of satisfaction in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, for us to be satisfied, there are forces and tools that God uses for our early satisfaction. And it is important that we understand and have hold of these keys so that we can take advantage of these keys and then get ready, position ourselves for early satisfaction. Number one is the force of prayer. Bro, you want to be satisfied, get ready to pray. You want early satisfaction, you must be a man and a woman of prayer. The first force of satisfaction is the force of prayer. Show me a man who can pray and I will show you a man who will be satisfied. Psalm 105 and verse 40. Show me a man who can pray. I will show you a man who will be satisfied. Amen. Why am I saying this? A closed mouth is a closed destiny. The Bible says the people ask and he brought quails and satisfy them with the bread of heaven until they asked they were never satisfied are you following me this morning the people asked then he brought quail and satisfied them with the bread of heaven until they asked God remained silent God will remain silent on many issues until you open your mouth and ask him show me a man of prayer I will show you a man who will be satisfied in life because if you can pray well you will live well a closed mouth is a closed destiny. The answer you have not received are the prayers you have not said. Prayer is a force of satisfaction. Because if there's a man to pray, there's always a God to answer. A vital key to early satisfaction is the force of prayer. You must be a man and a woman of prayer. You must spend time in the secret place. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Good talk is as gratifying as a good harvest. If you need a good harvest in your life, you must be filled with good talks. You said that God didn't bring to pass. So I talk like a big man everywhere. Oh, you don't understand. I'm telling you, I talk like a big man everywhere. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I speak like a big man, amen. Because I know that's who I am. It's not in my bank account. It's in my position in Christ. I'm so big, glory to God. I'm so valuable. I, you, 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 you know, Forbes can't capture my worth. I'm telling you. Because you will need to capture the worth of God to capture my worth. 
That's the self-confidence you need to walk through at all in the midst of every crisis and every situation. Hallelujah. That's what you need to speak right, to hold out your conversation right. You need that self-confidence in God. Amen. You need that godly self-esteem. Your self-esteem built on the word of God, built on what he has said about you. Amen. It doesn't matter what the word says about you, but what is the word saying about me? Hallelujah. The word already said, I may see it said upon the hill that cannot be hidden. So I know nothing can hide me in the name of Jesus Christ. I am too anointed. I'm loaded. I'm needed. The force of confession. Even God, even God is bound by this force. It's a universal principle. What you say is what you see. What you say, listen, is what you see. What you see is more important, but what you say is much more important. What you say is what you see. Listen, what you see is not what you will see. What you say is what you will see. I'm playing around words now. Because I've told you your confession in times of your confession is the conclusion of your condition. You have the right to, con to conclude your condition. There's no situation that is powerful enough to conclude your condition. Your confession in the times of your confusion is the conclusion of your condition. Not what you see in times of your confusion. It's what you say that ends the matter. Even God is bound by this principle. Nine times in Genesis. Genesis 1, chapter 1, Genesis 1, 3, Genesis 1, 6, Genesis 1, 9, Genesis 1, 11, Genesis 1, 14, Genesis 1, 20, Genesis 1, 24, Genesis 1, 26, Genesis 1, 29, and God said, 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 and God said. In Genesis 1, 31, and God saw. What he said, what was he saw. So what you see, is what you have been saying. And what you will see is what you will begin to say. So you can give life, then you can extract life. It's all in your power. Amen. A man of God, you don't understand my own condition. Amen. Hallelujah. I have more problems than God himself who made the heavens and air. My problem is so big, you don't understand. Amen. I just don't deal with reality. Amen. Look at how you look at how long you've been dealing with reality. Look at how long you've been dealing with reality. Amen. Why don't you deal with reality from the word of God? Amen. Why don't you raise your voice? Why don't you raise your shoulder and declare what God says about you? Amen. Why don't you tell yourself, Amen. I can buy and drink without money. Hallelujah. I can buy wine. I can buy corn without money because Isaiah 55 says that. Amen. Hallelujah. For I can do all things through Christ as friend is me. Why don't you tell yourself, I'm not limited in any way. The greater one lives on the inside of me. Greater is he that is on the inside of me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. Amen. Hallelujah. I live by faith. Amen. I don't live by what I see. Amen. For the Lord God is my shepherd, so I shall not want. I lack nothing. Amen. I will no longer be broke one day in my life. Amen. For my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus Christ. Amen. I am not a sick trying to be healed. Amen. I was healed over many years in Christ Jesus amen and i have victory in christ jesus for for for, for thanks be unto god which causes us always to triumph in christ jesus amen i don't triumph once in a while amen i win all the time amen because my victory is assured in christ jesus hallelujah for the servants of this present time i know what it to be covered with the glory that shall be revealed in me i'm loaded with glory amen i'm glorified am i talking to somebody here this morning i say i'm glorified in the name of jesus christ I'm glorified. I'm glorified. You, why don't you put God's word in your mouth? Amen. I'm beginning to declare what God says about you. The force of conversion. For we understand by faith that even the words were framed by the word of God. Amen. So that the things which we see, we are made out of the things which we can see. We are made out of the word of God. Amen. And God framed the aeons. God framed the times and the season by the word of his mouth. When he saw darkness, he said, let there be light. Amen. I'm going to speak light when I see darkness. Hallelujah. Learn to speak the opposite of what you see. When I see darkness, I declare light. Because that's what he did. And he gave us a way to go about it. Amen. Your words will either make you or my you. Your words will make your destiny or my your destiny. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 4. Joel chapter 3 and verse 10 C. He says, let the weak say, I am strong. 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 Let the weak never say, I am weak. Man of God, I'm so weak. Pastor, I, hallelujah. In order to justify your lateness, in order to justify indiscipline, you want, I, I'm weak, I'm weak. I'm just, being, I'm just being myself. I'm weak. I've been weak all through the week. That's why you're weak. Amen. That's why you're never strong. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Someone sent me a text yesterday. I was telling my wife, man of God, I'm not going to be in church today. I, 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 I want to rest. I've really worked all the week. I say, you are, you, are, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble, amen. So you walk all through the week, so it's Sunday that must suffer it. See the premium you place on God. See the value you place on his presence. That's very interesting. Stay home, amen. Don't worry. Stay home. Rest. Amen. Don't worry. Don't worry. The Lord of the Sabbath will give you rest during the week very soon. Amen. May you not rest. May, may you not rest. Are you tired of rest? Amen. You needed a job. We prayed. He gave you a job. You, you have the right to call me and say, I want to use Sunday to rest. Don't worry. He's still with us. He's not a wicked God. No, he doesn't do that. Amen. But once you start working, you see, what, what happens is that certain things happen. God never withdraws the ble his blessings. And I must tell you that that's very important because if God does that, then God will have been retaliating, which is not in his nature. He never retaliates. Oh, God blesses you because you have not gone astray. You choose to, God will now come and withdraw it. No, God never does that. If God blesses you and you go back, you feel you have other things to use the money and the bless, God will not withdraw it. But guess how it is withdrawn? Because the moment God steps out, he just leaves you alone with it. He's not the one withdrawing. Amen. The accuser, the adversary steps in and his own primary assignment is to kill, to steal and to withdraw and, and, and to destroy. So what happens is that God stands and look, he's not the one withdrawing it. You invite somebody else who has capacity to withdraw it. Even while you are on God's side, he will still try to withdraw it. But because God is on your side, it becomes impossible for him to achieve. Am I talking to somebody here? But when you, when you leave your protection, when you leave your shield alone, and if you, it, it doesn't withdraw anything. So if, if, if he loses the job God gave him, it's not because God withdrew it because he didn't come to church. Amen. The one who has capacity to protect him said, no, hold it. I can protect myself. He said, no problem. Amen. God never does beyond what you think he should do for you. No wonder in Genesis 11, 6, he said, my spirit will no longer strive with man. My spirit will not argue with man. Whatever he wants, I let him have his way. I want to shop apple. Go ahead and shop apple. Amen. They see the consequence of shopping apple. Amen. I hope nobody is shopping apple here. Is it dangerous? Amen. Praise God. The force of confession. Number three, the force of diligence. The force of diligence. The force of diligence. The force of diligence. A major force to any satisfaction is hard work, diligence. In life, you either choose hard work or hard life. There's no in between. Hard work or hard life. In life, you either choose to work hard or embrace hard life. Proverbs 13, 11. I love that scripture. Proverbs 13, 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. Amen. Wealth gotten by vanity. Wealth. Listen. Let this go. Let every Yahoo boy hear me and hear me well. Wealth gotten by vanity shall vanish. And the shit you have eaten is eating up your stomach. Eating shit everywhere and bread. Shit has become beans. One was posted online. I could, this week, I couldn't even stand it. I couldn't even stand it. Feces. Feces became and we're going. Physics became Togolese bread. That he was using bread to scoop. He will smell it. And, it, and yes, he will eat it. Is that not madness? Wealth got him by vanity. We diminish. God's word stands sure forever. Every Yahoo boy, listen to me. You will soon be poor. No, it's not your prayer. No, it's not a prayer point. It's not a prayer point. It's what God's word has established. Amen. Somebody said. Please, where can I get a holy Yahoo boy to marry me? On Twitter. Amen. And the Nigeria police force responded, it's in our custody. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. He says, listen, but he that gathered by labor shall increase. He that gathered by labor shall increase. He says, he that tilleth the land shall have. He that tills the land, that gathers by labor. Hallelujah. What am I saying to you, ladies and gentlemen? There is bread everywhere. The bread you haven't gotten is the land you have not tilled. 
I'm telling you. There's harvest everywhere. The harvest you have not gotten is the land you have not tilled. God works, even God works. And God told me yesterday, he said, even me, God, to achieve result, I worked. Six days, I was working to get results. You can't do less. Without work, you can't have results. Without work, you have insults. Because if you don't have results, you will have insults. Only results terminate insults. If you don't want to be insulted, get ready to work hard. Amen? Get ready to work hard. If you don't want to be insulted, be a man of value. Amen? People will gather, your life is like ATM. People will only gather around the ATM as long as he has value inside to give them. Once there's no more money, everybody, idiot. I don't know if I've seen that. And we stand there, God punishes with them. They walk away. If you don't want people to walk away from your life, if you don't want your life to be empty, if you don't want to receive embarrassment and shame, you must have value on the inside. To get, as long as you have value, they will gather around you. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Oh my God. I think GTHM has got some real value. Sometimes when I see the queue, I say, God forbid. <laughs> I'll be with you and queue. Why? Because that guy has got some value. Once there's so much money on the inside of it, everybody turns back. If the ATM thinks I'm celebrated, look at that people waiting around me, gathering around me, oh my God, I'm a G. Once it loses value, you will soon understand that he has nothing. God works. You must work. Hallelujah. In fact, only hard workers benefit from the largest of grace. Grace has largest. Grace has source to share. Only hard workers benefit from everything that grace has got to share. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. He said, but I work hard, I labor. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this scripture. Amen. When the grace of God is on your life. Amen. You you, you don't have to walk. Amen. God will give you a result. Amen. Even if you are in your house. Amen. The bless. Hey, 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 hey. Calm down. It's not so. <laughs> bros. Say bros. It's not so. Because that will be a violation of principle. Amen. When God's grace is on your life, others may have got... They, listen to me. That Jacob still carried it. It's a level of work. They didn't carry it there for it. Don't you know he did something? Oh God, talk to me, church. He did something. He was the one that presented it. Hallelujah. He, he took it there by himself. Amen. Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was, which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. I labored more. I am by grace. I labor more than everybody. Yet, I am by grace. So, Paul, you are, you are, you are messing at theology. You say you got it by grace, but you say you labor more than every other person. He said, look, look he, he said, this Paul, he said, but I labor more abundantly than, than all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. In other words, grace used my labor to accomplish the incredible. So, grace will use work in your life to accomplish the incredible. Without labor, nothing prospers. The work belongs to those given to hard work. Hard work betrays no one. Talent can carry you up, but only hard work will keep you there. In other words, talent can't carry you too far without hard work. No lazy man ends up happy. A lazy man ends up dejected, depressed, insulted. Laziness feels good, but disappoints on payday. There's no substitute for hard work. Grace is not a license for laziness. In other words, work hard or lose out. They've got to choose one. God sells all things at the price of hard work. He sells all things at the price of hard work. The harder you work, the luckier you become. The harder you work, the luckier you become. So one of the key to any satisfaction is hard work. Somebody get ready for hard work. Listen to me. There's dignity in labor. There's dignity in labor. One of the things that has killed this part of the world is all this. I can't do I can't listen to me. Some of your sisters who have master's degree, eh, who are doing like this in Nigeria, cleaner is their husband in America. 
Because in America, nobody cares. Nobody cares. A cleaner does his job well. He's very excited. See those boys clean the airport from where you get? That's their job. They're excited with it. They earn their dollar. They earn their $10 and $11 an hour. They do 10 hours a day. They are with it. That's just it. And they live in normal houses. They ride normal cars if they want to, as long as they are concerned. Amen. Some of them, their husband works in McDonald's, but they will marry somebody working in Mr. Big's here. Because the man working in Mr. Big's here should look down at himself as if he may see his friend come, he, he, he hides himself. Say, just help me sell it, help me sell it. Why? There's dignity in labor. Only, only robbers are supposed to be ashamed. Just get down doing something. Do something, my brother. Do, do something. If you have to push truck, push truck. It's better to push truck and not beg than to beg up and down the street. Are you hearing what I'm saying, somebody? Walk. Finally. Finally. Because of our time. The force of the anointing. In Psalm 23, David said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Listen, that a table is prepared before is not a guarantee you will eat out of it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, it takes the heart to sit behind the table eating and there no weapon formed against you. Prosperous. Some died while eating on that same table prepared before them. They had the table, they lacked the oil. Don't look at David. They, they have the table, but they lack the oil on their head. So they died. Arrows eat them while eating on the same table. Because this table was prepared in the presence of their enemies. And their enemy still has a weapon in his hands. Their enemy still wants to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So when God prepares the table, their own oil must be on your head. To eat comfortably on that table without any assault. Because it says... Touch not my anointed. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying? So when the anointed is on the table, there's a touch not embargo. Touch not. Amen. And then you are eating, you are doing like this. You are doing like this. Hey. Some of you, in the name of Jesus, before this year is over, you will eat with 35 fingers. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I said you will eat with 35 fingers. When you are done eating with your 10 finger, you will borrow 25 more from your enemies. Take their finger, take their finger, take their finger, take their finger, take their finger. And you will eat with 35 fingers. Why? Because you have more than enough. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He said, but mm, before I ate, thou anointed my head with oil. Then my cup was running over. Hallelujah. The goodness and mercy became my bodyguard. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Goodness was on one side. Uh, mercy was on the other side. Oh, David, leave us alone. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Amen. Those are two powerful forces. When mercy stays with a man. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Jacob, have I loved? Esau, have I hated? When they had knowledge of good and evil, the elder shall serve the younger. Say, God, what's all this? Say, mercy is speaking. Can I prophesy to somebody? May mercy speak over your life this month. Because you need to be satisfied early. May mercy speak over your life this very first quarter. In the name of our Lord Jesus, I pray for some people. Before the end of March, before the end of the first quarter, this year would have been done and dusted for you. You will not get in December what others are getting in January. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, may God grant you speed. I say, may God grant you speed. May God take you to that level like Matthew Ashimolowa said. When you, when you begin to spend getaway money. You know what they call getaway money? Pastor Matthew described what they call getaway money. There's getaway money. We need to get into that realm. Sir, there's what they call getaway money. You know what getaway money is? Please, I said, I need to catch a flight now. Please, book me on the next flight. Ah, sir. Sir, oh, we've just checked. It's only, we, we don't have space in the economy. We only have bus. Get away. Book it. You hear what I said? Sir, book me on that flight now. I need to get to America now. Sir, we don't have space in the economy and even business class. The only space we have or spaces available 
is on first class. You know why they are telling you? You just say, what? Well, get away, book it. Don't waste my time. That's get away money. Get away, book it, my friend. Don't waste my time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, get, ah, we know, ah, first class. Ah, ah. Ah, wow. How much is that first class? Sir, listen to me. Listen to me. You're just going to America there. First class. $14,000. Just to go to America. You know what $14,000? $14,000 on first class. Amen? On first class. An economy on that same flight. $1,003, $1,004, $1,500. $1,500. First class, $14,000 on the same flight. We will take off the same time. We we'll land the same time. Amen? When poverty want to, when poverty want to, want to mess up a mind, we say, hey, whether you fly first class, whether you fly, we all land. Listen, 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 listen. You are in two different worlds, though. Don't deceive yourself. Oh. No, 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 no. You are in two different worlds, though. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. In all this world, we will leave it one day. And nobody will die in the world. You are wasting your time. If I wear what, why not go enjoy money? Those people just talk as if rich people should not enjoy their money. As if they came to live all their life for the poor. Did it cost you? This age should not work when he was doing his own work. Let him enjoy life, man. And he said he, he bought two of that customized phone. Two, 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 two. Can you buy a phone? Two hundred thousand. Are you right? He said, but he was to sign a deal in France. He said when he got into that meeting, we we're waiting for the boss to come in. And he said he put this, those two phones on the table. And when the boss came, he said, whose phone is this? Because he knows what he said. He said, hey, yours. He said, this. He said this guy can do the deal. I think it's what. Let's give him. No, 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 end of discussion. Oh, that you fly to France is not enough. Oh. Poor people enter France. Oh. Amen. Say, yeah, his phone is. He say, hey, you, okay, is the guy came for it? No, he's what? This guy can do it. Let's, let's sign it. Levels. Somebody say levels. levels. Somebody say levels. levels. May God give you get away money this week. Every man, the oil came on their life. Are you with me? Every man that the oil came on their life, they had satisfaction. The oil came on Saul. Saul was satisfied. The oil came on David. David was satisfied. The oil came on Jesus. For he gave him the spirit without, without, that is, he anointed my cup overflow. Jesus had the spirit without measure. John 3, 23. He was heavily satisfied. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing willing them that were oppressed of the devil. He never enjoyed one day of shame. You will not enjoy a day of shame. He got satisfaction. So for you to have any satisfaction, number one, the force of what? Prayer. Number two, the force of confession. Number three, the force of diligence. Listen, I say this to all young people here. Get something to do. Get a work to do. Nothing builds life like work. Nothing builds your brain like work. When you are when, when you are not working, your brain stops working. When your brain is engaged, something happens. Amen. Uh, Holy Ghost can work better with a working brain, not with a dead brain. Get something doing. Give more than you are expected. That's the way to the top. Hallelujah. When I didn't have a job, I volunteered in church. I was doing church admin. I did that for about three years. Amen. And I just wake up, go to church, arrange pastor's office, amen, get everything set, eh? help them con put all the books of Sunday, put everything together, get the church ready for Tuesday, remind my pastor things he has forgotten. Amen. I, he gave me his office key. He gave me his office key. And those days we have a past my neighbor. Amen. So when they are playing football, we didn't have DSTV in our house. We couldn't afford DSTV. I put on the church DSTV. Asna, asna. Only me in the office with AC. <laughs> Everything get enjoyment too. Uh, he that served his master, his master we all know. And so now, let another person go and put on pastors. I pass my neighbor. I'll be watching something. He will hear it. Even when he comes, oh, say you are there. Okay, okay. God bless you. God bless you, my son. Ah, daddy, come. No, no, no. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. They can say that to you only when you have served. Sit down, sit down. No, 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 no. no. Feel comfortable. Go and get something to do. And finally, crave for the anointing. 
understand that from time to time you'll be anointed. It's not an ordinary oil. If you, if you place the value of an ordinary oil on it, amen, it touches your head and it does nothing. But you've got to be hungry. This morning I'm going to anoint you very quickly. Amen? Very quickly. And as we anoint you this morning, this is a special anointing service. You know why I've told you the brain behind this. This was a gift from the general Garcia. Amen? This oil is a gift from general Garcia. Personally prayed into for days. He said God told him to pray into this oil for days. He did and God said go and give it to him. Let him anoint. It's not everybody. This one is not for the whole of Redeemer. Amen? Just one promise. No, four, four, four. Out of 292. Just four. Selected four out of 292. And we are one of them. And he said, I asked the Lord, what's this word for? God said, it's an empowerment for wealth creation. Some of you, after this word, it touches your head. Amen? You'll be afraid of your brain. Some of you will be afraid of your mind. Because the kind of vision the kind of thoughts, ideas that your mind will capture, you'll be wondering. It will, it will bring fear to you. Can I? Will I execute this? When, when, when we left the, when we left the, the, the what's it called? The seminar. What's it? The conference yesterday. Man, I left challenge because while all the people were coming in, they had, they had told me, come, 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 Pastor Sui, we are going to receive them together. Then Bishop Machikuka came. Received him together. He came in. When uh, Pastor, I mean, was Professor Adeshino came, I was with the security guys, Dipo and all of them. He said, I don't believe we're going to receive them together. Amen. And when the guy came, especially the prof, when he came with his congregation and all of that, and of course, when he became to understand that one, you know, when that guy, when I read his CV, and when that guy finished, I just told myself, listen, greatness is not an option. Whatever is the price we are ready to pay, we will die there. Hello. I have to speak the language of the say we died there. Whatever is the price of greatness, I know responsibility is the price of greatness. Some are not responsible. That's why they will never be great. Always wishing, always wishing to happen. God will do it. God will do it. And God is saying, do something. Do something so I can do something. Until you do something, God does nothing. Mm. <laughs> Whatever be you must leave such an environment challenge. Oh, don't you know greatness is sweet? You know, when that man came here, come and see convoy. Come and see police everywhere. I said, God, this is one man. I love it. Mm, sorry, sorry. Oh, Lord, I love it. <laughs> oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I love it. If, 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 if you are that man's wife, I just watch him. You just be saying, ah, oh, come here, carry. Ah, oh, Lord, worry. Ah. I'm telling you, you just say, ah, my husband, my husband. Whoa, what if, what if, man? What, my mentor, my mentor. Uh, not every husband can become mentor. Uh, may your wife call you mentor. <laughs> Say my mentor. Say that's my coach. My one and only. When when he came in, you need to see the aura that came in with him. You know, some people were struggling to to shake him, and that man has got a lovely story. Look at look look at that's talking about prayer. Some of you hear the story of that man. We had this college. They said, all of you go back to Nigeria. We don't have money. You, you, you heard that story. Don't play. Prayer was God answers prayer. That man has got a story. He was not born with this. In fact, he said, in fact, we born with silver spoon. His problem. His problem. If you don't have silver spoon, maybe you have your fingers. Convert it to silver spoon. And that eats faster. Some of us have learned to convert our, our hands. Hear me. This is my silver spoon. I tell you where any. Oh, in the Every other thing is deception. They give you money, they dash you money, it's deception. The only thing that does not deceive is this one. The work of your hands. Rise up on your feet, somebody. Lift up your hands and say, Father, satisfy me early. As this oil touches me, satisfy me early. Will you open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus? I'll give you one minute to pray that prayer because I'm not going to have time to just keep praying for you afterwards. You need any satisfaction, somebody pray.
In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody is I quote the man of God. My father, I believe so much in his ministry and the grace of God on his life. He said, this anointing oil is an anointing for wealth creation. And your people will, be, will, will prosper after this way. The anointing will make things work. And I believe in that grace. I'm not if you believe in it as well. So once the word touches you, somebody be expectant. Levels the oh levels the change. Oh. Can you see what I'm saying? I told you in this church. I just shared another vision with somebody yesterday. No, 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 no. But let me keep that one. Because this is still going to be a parish. Throne of Grace HQ. We are still moving somewhere. This is just going to... We have seen the future. We have seen the future. This is just an ordinary... Children Church. Children Church, really, really branch. Children Church. Things can stay here. It's too, it's too local for them. Children Church. We have seen the future. I told you... We're going to sit down and have the Bologna round table. And when we have the Bologna round table, we are not praying. Every, every, every witch from my father's house, you are a liar. Oh, you are dying. Who's talking about witch? Amen. Amen. There's coronavirus in China. We want to fund the research to get that out of people's life, out of our land. Amen. We are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are releasing funds to deal with polio in Africa. We are talking about funds to eradicate malaria in Africa. That's what we are dealing with. We are not talking of wheat from my father's house. Amen. You don't know there's a kind of wealth God gives you even which we keep quiet. You think saying in life to suffer die? Amen. You think saying life to suffer die? They told Abiola those they say, ah, Agba no, only, ah, only no, only the kind of money God has given us. Agba no ba wo no ma kusi no any was so sure of what he was saying. And of course, in his lifetime, that's a reality. Now that he's gone, wealth has moved to some people's hands. Anything can happen. Get ready for stupendous wealth. Get ready to be on my billionaire's round table. Are you ready for me? Are you ready for me? Unfortunately, some of the people will be on this table. They don't even have a bank account now. <laughs> so they are not sure. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything will come out of Nazareth? But guess what? The Savior is coming out of Nazareth. 